Now, the history taking. Um, it must be emphasized that the gynecological examination always demands the presence of a well-trained chaperone because of litigation. Any good history taken from the patient must include the demographic information, the name, age, and parity of the patient, the age of the last child, and then the last normal menstrual period. The marital status and occupation may also be added. Now, the presenting complaints from the patient must be taken, and the history of the presenting complaints must be well elucidated uh, in chronological order. This must be done together with the well-targeted specific questions to reinforce or clarify the history of presenting complaints. Also, it will be important to find out if there has been any previous treatment of, this, uh, of the current condition. Then direct questioning is used to clarify some of the problems found. And then the various organ systems are also then reviewed for any problems that has not been that have not been mentioned by the patient, and that is the systemic systematic inquiry. Now one proceeds then to take the medical and surgical history. So once you find out about the medical problems that the patient has any significant problems um, such as hypertension, sickle cell disease, diabetes mellitus, asthma, tuberculosis, G6PD defect, psychiatric illness, cardiac disease, and any other major illness that may be of interest. Now, if there has been any previous uh, surgeries, find out about laparotomies and then their indications. The past obstetric history is also in, very important in the gynecological history taking. Now, one has to find out about the gravidity and parity of the patient, as uh, mentioned in the demographic area. Now, the gravidity refers to the number of times the client has been pregnant. The parity then refers to the number of times the client has delivered after the period of viability. The period of viability in Ghana is taken as 28 weeks. And with the parity, once the woman delivers, the baby need not be alive before you term it uh, parity. It can, be an, uh, it can be a still birth or it can be a live birth. Now, any deliveries before this period or any expulsion of the fetus before this period is usually termed a miscarriage or an abortion. Now, in certain areas, the period of viability may be defined as a gestational age of 22 to 24 weeks, and the WHO supports 22 weeks. Other areas in the world may use 24 weeks, 22, 23, 24 weeks as necessary. And this is according to the uh, sophistication of neonatal care. Now, the previous abortions and ectopic pregnancies will have to be noted. And multiple pregnancies should also be noted, but the delivery of a set of twins is taken as a single delivery. In other words, it confers only one parity status. And then the duration of labor of the previous deliveries is important. The mode of delivery is equally important, whether it's normal delivery or caesarean section or by instrumental delivery, all these are important. Now, the birth weight, the sex and the gestational ages at which the children were born is very important. Now, if there were complications of the pregnancy, the labor, and the puerperum, these also should be highlighted because they may have important bearings on the gynecological status of the woman. A typical example is postpartum cervical prolapse or uterine prolapse. 
for which adequate treatment is needed. So, uh, later in life, the woman may actually develop full-blown uh, pelvic organ prolapse. Now, the gynecological history itself, that involves the menstrual history, the contraceptive history, sexual or marital history, and the history of previous investigations or treatment, including surgery. Now, the menstrual history. It's important to find out about the last menstrual period, again, as highlighted in the demographic era, area. The age at menarche, that means the first menstruation, and in writing up, we represent this by a K, a capital K. The duration of the menstrual cycle, and the, that is C, that means the, the cycle length, and the number of days of menstrual flow are all crucial. In the patient with a menarche at 12 years, with five days of menstrual flow, in a regular 28-day cycle, is written in shorthand form as capital K, 12, uh, and then C, 5 over 28. That is a shorthand form. Now, one also has to find out if the menstruation has been regular. In a painful, that's this menorrhea, or associated with heavy blood loss. An estimation of the blood loss may be helpful. Then one also has to determine the color of the menstruum and then the amount of flow and the amount of flow. So is there any intermenstrual bleeding? Are there any other symptoms such as sweating, cramping, headaches, or dizziness? The previous menstrual period may also be very helpful. The normal menstruation lasts between two and eight days. Anything shorter or longer than this is abnormal and needs to be investigated. The patient also needs to be evaluated for the presence of mid-cycle pain and disease. Now, mid-cycle pain may be particularly important in patients seeking infertility treatment. Uh, that may be the time of ovulation and so most patients with infertility and severe mid-cycle pain may not be having any sexual intercourse at this point in time and so therefore miss the pregnancy altogether but when they are put together during this period pregnancy is easily achieved now the history of previous investigations and treatment it's important to find out about any previous vaginal discharge the pelvic infections and then, if there has been any previous gynecological surgery, for instance, minor surgery such as diagno <coughs> diagnostic DNC and um, other types of surgery, including laparoscopy or ruptured ectopic pregnancy, are important. Major surgeries may include myometomy or hysterectomy, then pelvic floor repair, and operations for stress incontinence. The metroplasty, cervical comb biopsies are also important They're in, in their various forms, either cold knife biopsy or large loop excision of the transformation zone, and then repair of psychovaginal fistula and or rectal vaginal fistula. Now, one also has to find out if there has been any period of infertility and the treatment that has been given for it. Is there a history of previous pap smear? If so, what was the result and how long ago was it done? One also has to find out about any previous operations on the genital tract such as... Oh, sorry, this is what I have uh, talked about already. The contraceptive history is also important and one has to find out about the type of contraceptives used and the complications suffered so far. For instance, the presence of amenorrhea or thromboembolic phenomena or dysmenorrhea or menorrhagia and IUCD complications such as pain and vaginal discharge. The marital history 
or sexual history is also important. They want us to find out if the couples are well and uh, if, if the patient is married and the duration of the marriage. Is there a history of infertility and how long did it last? Is there any painful coitus? That means dyspareunia. Is there sexual satisfaction? All these are important uh, for the gynecological history. Now, the social history comes next, and one has to find out about the occupation of the woman and her husband. And then we also have to find out about their habits, uh, especially of alcohol intake and cigarette smoking or tobacco smoking. The drug history is also equally important. One has to find out about the long-term use of drugs. For instance, antihypertensives or hypoglycemic agents. Is there any allergy to any food or to any drugs? Now, the gynecological history is basic. Um, the main elements of the history taken at the gynecological clinic is what I have discussed now. Now, the next stage will be for the physical examination of the patient, and this will be demonstrated adequately uh, on the video at the next session.